Uh, we go on to the next lecture by Dr. Pramod Bende. Pramod Bende is a senior retro retinal surgeon from Shankara Netralaya and needs no introduction. He is an authority on pediatric retinal detachments and uh, he is a person I turn to whenever I have any problematic patients. I pick up the phone and say, Pramod, I have a problem. Can I say, he always says, please send the patient. I am in the OPD on Thursday and takes care of the patient. So, uh, Pramod, uh, I request you to give you a lecture on uh, buckle in vitrectomy. What is its role? When do you do? When do you combine? Introduction and thanks for invitation to be part of this course. We'll just start with the one single case. The 60-year-old male, <coughs> the right eye, had a vision of 50 centimeter, a finger counting, and reported the detachment. So underwent vitrectomy. We added silicon oil. And patient came back with a recurrence. Uh, you can see the PVR membrane here. You can have a pointer in there. See. Particularly this area, if you see here, PVR membrane break was here, lifted up. Now, with optos we are having, we are learning some more new things that, uh, particularly when you take a wide angle visual fundus photography visualizing system. Uh, what we are seeing now is this is what you see the meniscus. Okay. This is oil meniscus, inferior part, and this is a part which is not tamponed, which is not supported. Okay. So, and that is what an when patient, if cannot maintain his positioning, obviously this is going to lift up. And that's exactly what happened in this case. So ultimately we landed up cutting this retina, settled down, patient is doing well, and after re-silicon oil injection, RR of the other edge. So basic principles of detachment surgery, what we all talk about, finding the breaks, localizing the break, and closing the break. And what is important is we need to relieve all the vitreotonal traction and so that reopening of the old breaks or formation of new breaks can be minimized and thereby you can minimize the risk of recurrent detachment. Now we have different surgical methods which are definitely influenced by the properties of morphology of the detachment. That's the most important factor. Other patient characteristics, available tools for surgery and experience ability of the oper operating surgeons. And choice varies significantly between surgeons and centers and also the way you are trained mainly. So, but the good part is overall, there's a relatively high anatomical success rate in experienced surgeons hand. Various techniques as we listed here and common as we already discussed, scleral buckling, vitrectomy and combination of these techniques we have more common we are using nowadays. Now, limitation of scleral buckling, when you look at it here, these two particularly cases, severe VI attraction, or if there is intrinsic retinal contraction, buckle alone cannot completely address this issue. You have large posterior multiple breaks like here. Again, uh, you are difficult to support. Media haze, where high risk of missed breaks, obviously there is a high risk of recurrent detachment. And if you have associated coronal detachment, we know all that is a high risk of failure. So with the improved technique, technology, MIVS, wide angle visualization system, bright illumination, primary vitrectomy has become safer and more popular as Dr. Murlidhar has suggested. Okay. So advantages are it can be performed under local anesthesia, removes media opacity, relieves all the traction, so media opacity is clear, so unlikely you will miss any breaks. Uh, you can uh, intraoperatively search for any tiny breaks if, if they are missed earlier. Intraoperatively you ensure retina is flattened, there is no muscle imbalance, and minimum shift of refraction. So basically it increases overall patient comfort, faster recovery, and basic cosmetic appearance as well. However, good vitreous base section, though recommended, is relatively difficult in fakie guys. Now this incomplete removal of the anterior vitreous may lead to in vitreous incarceration at the sclerotomy site, and subsequently post-operative anterior hyaluronic contraction can worsen the traction, leading to uh, secondary retinal breaks, Vitreous tamponade, particularly by imp tamponades internally, when you are doing a scleral buckling, and once you have vitreous is removed, obviously, though no internal tamponade, and what uh, Naresha just mentioned, either you need a gas or oil to tamponade these eyes internally. Again, inferior breaks, significantly higher rate of still redetachment, though few cases can be managed, uh, because neither gas or oil support 
these areas. As you see earlier, and there's another case, typically, as you see again, layer here, like a level of the silicon oil, and you have a break inferiorly here. So we do some additional steps. Retinectomy or retinectomy, when you have a persistent residual traction due to firm weightless adhesion and contraction, or retinal pore shortening. Or the second option is scleral buckling or encircling band to support vitreous base and oracillata and to close peripheral or inferior retinal breaks. So here comes the combined scleral buckling and vitrectomy for retinal detachment. So additional bail buckle is my, again, personal choice. Most of the cases having a retinal detachment, I still prefer to support with at least encircling band. And it is placed along the posterior border of the vitreous base. That's what very, very important. You need to support the posterior border of vitreous base. There's no point just equator or just anteriorly, wherever you feel like. Now, it provides 360 degree support to relieve traction along the posterior border. That helps to settle the retina, to decrease the likelihood of secondary retinal breaks, and also sometimes to support unrecognized break as well. So when you look at it, basically, you need to plan in advance. Can lo localize and place the belt buckle before making slotomy if you can and aim to support the posterior border, as I earlier said. Now, leaving the bail buckle snugly fitting over the sclera during surgery and adjust the buckle height at before the surgery. These are the cases particularly where vitreous cannot be separate. This is basically ROP baby. Surgery cannot be, vitreous cannot be separate completely. So you add the buckle. Generally, knowing these situations, I sometimes add buckle very well in advance, even before I start vitreotomy, before I make the sclerotomy. Sometimes try to localize where vitreous base is there. Keep it snugly fitting, and this is what you see at the end, the bail by the buckle effect there. If you are not sure, you can make scleral tunnels to start with and pass the bail buckle at the end to minimize the manipulation. If you decide to add buckle at the end of surgery, close all the sclerotomies temporarily to make the eye firm for easy is to make tunnels or pass the suture. And once you uh, add your buckle, assess the final buckle height in a normal tensile eye, bring the pressure down. As far as additional buckle is concerned, I still prefer inferior breaks where I, be, I suspect minimal contraction of the retina. You have multiple loads of lattice, lattices where you cannot, cannot separate the vitreous completely. You have a posterior migration of vitreous base. You have limited intrinsic contraction of the retina, posterior segment, open globe injuries, and retinal incarceration particularly, where again you have a residual traction almost always. And pediatric detachment, 100% I would support, particularly inferior part. And you have congenital developmental disorder leading to detachment where, again, vitreous separation is almost impossible from the retina. And we have, also again, vascular retinopathies. You have a peripheral vitreous other end. So this is typically what you show is you having a posterior migration of vitreous. But you see the sharp line, irregular, and elevated where retina typically pulled off. These are the eyes where you have posterior migration. Again, this is uh, posterior migration during vitrectomy. You can see here the age is tugging up here. You have a, this is the amount of vitreous contraction and taut vitreous. These eyes, again, you will not be able to retraction. Either you support or you do RR along this edge. You will be eventually land up cutting the retina. So these are the eyes rather I would prefer having a support with externally. Multiple horseshoe tear. And along with that, you have these lattices where, again, you see vitreous will not, you will not be able to separate vitreous beyond this edge. So anterior vitreous you cannot cut. This vitreal, if you leave it behind, you, you, it will contract and subsequently patient come back recurrence and eventually will end up doing relaxing retinotomy along this stage. Taking this case, vitreous is extremely sticky, as you see here. Try to peel it off as much as possible, but again, this vitreous you cannot separate. These are the typical cases you need to add uh, external buckle to support these uh, eyes. This is another case, came with a recurrence. Now, Vitrectomy was done also, but what I did is like the only option would have been just go ahead, try to save, open this hole, but otherwise you just cut this retina. What I did is support it with segmental buckle and retina settled down without doing RR. For me, RR generally is a last option. However, there are issues. It increases the operation time, technically more demanding when you're dealing with a hypotonous vitrectomy is high because sclerotomies are leaky, reduced scleral rigidity, and protruding cannulas and infusion, particularly 23-25 gauge system when we are using now, it is difficult to rotate the eye to pass the sutures. Also, it is difficult to assess buccal height with open sclerotomies, and in also in a hypotonous eye. Uh, risk of infusion and other cannulas rubbing over retina and iatrogenic break or sometimes damaging lens also is very, very high. 
you can land up sometime choroidal hemorrhage during placement of this buccal because fluctuation intraocular pressure or instrument your cannulas are poking into the retina or choroid and there is increased swelling and discomfort during early post-operative period. So you need to deal with this. We need to consult patient. You need, and apart from what we are always talk about refractive changes, diplopia, and anti-segment ischemia. So plan in advance. Please place suture for plan buccal if necessary, if possible. Cleral buccal is generally placed after you achieve a reattachment of the retina and retinopexy, but before injecting your internal tamponade. Aim to support the breaks along the inferior 180 degree or peripheral vascular polyp if you have, or you have associated peripheral traction to avoid the relaxing retinotomy. Ideally, again, to localize the break, once you flatten the retina, use your indirect ophthalmoscope or direct visualization or endoilluminator. And before placing the, placing the suture, you can temporarily close both sclerotomy, clamp the infusion line, and use maybe increase the IOP to somewhere around 35 to 40. So when you have a eyeball is firm, easy to pass the suture. And to get a better exposure of field, retract conjunctiva tendon capsule, but because if you pull the muscles too much, again, lobe get distorted. Again, passing suture can be difficult. Your assessment can be wrong. So just gentle rotation of the globe, but retract your tenons and conjunctiva extensively. And once you place the buckle, you reduce the intraocular pressure after tightening the buckle to achieve the buckle, to assess the buckle height at the, when the pressure is near normal. So, and then followed by endotamponade. This is just uh, one of those cases. Once you finish this, uh, remove the membranes, peel this uh, vitreous off. But as you see here, firm vitreous attachment here. We, beyond this, you just cannot go here. Try it my best using your biomanure dissection and when when then you realize that I will not be able to extend like extend vitreous separation beyond that margin I realize that even if you shave this vitreous some amount of residual vitreous always there so and these are the patients eventually going to come back so we added a buckle and sometimes if you have residual traction and you are doubt how the retina may not settle so even you can tighten the buckle first as we done here and then do fluid air exchange and all this buccal height you are seeing add laser on it. So to summarize, in recent years, the choice of surgery, surgical techniques for the treatment of medium complex detachment is shifting more towards vitrectomy. No evidence exists that demonstrates the superior anatomical outcome. Other factors like expected side effects, unexplained complications are more important in decision making. In select group of detachments, combined vitrectomy and buccal gives better single surgery success rate, and that is what I look at. Rather than final surgery outcome uh, success, what I would give importance to single surgery success rate. And this combined approach gives a better relief of traction with improved peripheral visibility with vitrectomy, so you have fewer missed breaks and lower likelihood of PVR. So to conclude, each detachment should be treated using the simplest and most straightforward approach that will in opinion of surgeon, provide the greatest possibility of achieving reattachment in single surgery. Thank you very much again for uh, patient hearing. Thank you, Pramod, for a uh, wonderful uh, lecture on uh, the role of scleral buckle combined with vitrectomy. When do we do it? Uh, you have given good rationale.